There's only one place to turn. Fox Business Network. Start here. Start now. Four former executives of mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac will appear before the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee hearings today to answer questions of the collapse of their firms. Joining us now for a preview, Dan Burton is Republican representative of Indiana who serves on both the House Oversight and Government Reform Committees and voted against the TARP bailout both times. Good to see you. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. It's nice being with you. So, Congressman, tell me, what do you expect to get out of today's oversight meeting? Well, we want to get some, uh, answers to some of the questions that uh, we've been concerned about for so long. And we should have had this hearing a long time ago, early on, but uh, unfortunately we didn't. So today we're trying to get the answers. As we look back now at some of these exotic instruments, the, the kind of products that we saw out in the marketplace, what could Fannie and Freddie have done better about understanding the risks? Well, <laughs> they shouldn't have tried to uh, get uh, real deeply into the subprime uh, mortgage uh, area. Uh, what happened was they, they became deeper and deeper involved. They stopped a sound underwriting principles. They weren't really looking at all the things that should have been considered before they uh, gave all of these loans. And as a result, they had an awful lot of loans that uh, weren't worth the paper they were written on, and people started walking away from those loans, and uh, obviously you see what happened. Uh, the economy went south. As you and I both know, they've had legacy accounting issues now for quite some time. Uh, they had to readjust their books over the past couple of years. But when you look at where those companies stand today as to where they were four or five years ago, have we, the government, done enough since they are government-sponsored entities to make sure that we were giving the proper oversight as well? No, I think government's partially to blame. You know, in uh, 1992, Congress passed the Federal Housing Enterprises Financial Safety and Soundness Act. That's a long title. But anyhow, that uh, required that uh, more and more of the loans go to uh, low-income families. And uh, many of those people weren't uh, in a position to really buy a home, but uh, the requirement was that you give more uh, uh, loans to those people. And as a result, what happened was you had an awful lot of people who got loans, bought houses, and couldn't afford them. And as time went by, especially when you had the adjustable interest rate, people started walking away from those homes and left, uh, left the banks and the financial institutions in one heck of a place. And had uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac had sound underwriting principles back in 2003, 2004, 2005, we probably wouldn't have been in this mess. Do you worry, Congressman? I mean, the thing that worries me right now is is they backstop five to six trillion dollars worth of mortgages in this country, and one of the top proposals being discussed right now at a Treasury Secretary Paulson's office is a program where we would, in essence, either refinance or incentivize new home buyers to the tune of another trillion dollars. I just wonder: is their fiscal house in good enough shape for us to even consider the possibility? Uh, uh, of, of doing another trillion dollars when we're not even sure that what we got is any good. Well, you know, I was one of the people that voted against the bailout, and uh, I think just throwing money at the problem is not going to solve it. Uh, we should not have been in this situation in the first place, but uh, having the taxpayer bear the burden that it's going to have to that they're going to have to bear uh, just uh, doesn't make any sense to me. And adding another trillion or two trillion dollars to the equation is not going to solve the problem. I think ultimately it's going to make things worse because you're going to face an inflationary problem down the road that's going to be bad for us and our kids and our grandkids. So what would you like President-elect Obama to do when you're addressing this housing issue? Because the Office of the Comptroller of Currency recently released some uh, data that said that 36 percent of borrowers were more than 30 days late on their mortgage payment. I mean, you've seen the foreclosure statistics. They're scary. What can he do in this next administration to stem the tide? Oh, gosh, you're asking the wrong guy. That's one of the reasons we're having the hearings today. I, I think, uh, you know, we have to use sound business principles, and uh, that's a hard thing to to uh, anticipate in the climate we're in right now. There probably should be some government intervention, some government help, but bailing it out with all the taxpayers' money is not going to solve the problem. I think ultimately it's going to make things worse. All right. We don't, need a we don't need a socialistic economy in this country, and what really worries me is we're heading toward that with the auto bailout, the, uh, this $700 billion bailout. It really concerns me that government's going to become, uh, become a bigger and bigger part of our lives and control much of our lives, and I, I don't think that's good for this country. Yeah, well, the money, wow, scary, unbelievable. When to yeah. say when. All right, Congressman Dan Burton, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you.
All right, we will be back in just a moment with much more Money for Breakfast. Stay with us. Why are smart investors moving all their money to Scott Trade? Seven dollars won't buy two lattes or a few gallons of gas. But with Scott Trade, I can trade as many shares as I want, and it's still just seven bucks.